Hey Chad, hey hey Chad, what's up, man? What are you what are you, what are you doing? You on the internet? Oh hey Dom, yeah, I'm just looking up uh, elite Smash Brothers strats, you know. Oh wow, T- typical thing you can do on the internet. Um, uh, I love to uh, just Google search uh, a random animal's face. Oh, interesting. Yeah, just look at that for a little bit. What kind of, what kind of animal are you checking out right now? Checking out uh, like different types of bats. They have like funny little gremlin faces. I think they're funny. But I wonder if there's anything else you can do on the internet. Out yeah, there. you know, despite like sick esports strats and faces of animals, it feels like the internet's kind of run out of just content, you know? Like we've hit the better of the well. I got to tell you, I got a big old money bag with a dollar sign on it from all the work I've been doing. And, you know, I wish there was something out there that I could. Guys, 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 guys. Whoa, Whoa. Who, who is that? What, who is that? It's Paul. I just came from the other side of the internet where we don't ever hang out. Uh-huh. There's a thing called Patreon. Oh, wait. I've heard tale of this place. Tell me. It's a golden land where you can take your giant sacks of money uh. and put them into the internet uh. and more content comes out. You're telling me this is an automatic internet machine and aim? It's a golden <laughs> land of aim, yes. Well, I mean, there must be some sort of like heavy toll or like a, a series of tests you must take to even enter this golden land, I would assume. The only test is you have to be an adult with a credit card. That's the only test. And everybody gets that in America. Yeah. 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 You're born with them now at this point. You know what? This deal seems too good to be true. What do I get in return, Paul? You can do whatever you want and you can pay whatever you want and you get the reward that is equal to the amount of effort you put into it's a perfect system oh my god this sounds Mm. like a new basis of government pay to play if you want to pay to play to listen to this podcast you can pay two bucks three bucks whatever you want and you get to listen to the podcast on our on our patreon page and you get uh you get access to to the to the extra podcast right is that two to three dollars i don't even remember (laughs) i think it's i think what what are our patreon levels i don't remember anymore so you didn't spend too much time on the other side of the internet. No, I got so excited when I saw it, I ran back over here and I wanted to tell you guys about it. Do you tell me like new extra content would just be like rewarded for our, our donations? I mean, hell, I've been throwing money at my church and, and God's done nothing for me. So forget God. Stiff God. Guess what's over on the on the Patreon for Goosebutts? Two bucks. You get to tell us what to read you get to vote on the things for the ghoulastic book club adventure <laughs> sounds like he went back to the other side of the internet <laughs> i ran back real quick guys i found a shortcut i went and, checked. <laughs> and i came back with this information and and dom hmm. if you pay five dollars you get access to another podcast you have sold me uh well hold on i, I dom might be sold <laughs> i want to hear what it's about i need to know what's on this podcast okay. Sorry, I, I just act like Paul sometimes. I hear something and I just got, I gotta go. I gotta do it. <laughs> Paul, tell me about this I, podcast, this I, extra podcast. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I'll tell you while I just saw Dom's running off to the other side of the internet. He's running so he fast. Yeah, his bag of money just hanging low down like it's nuts and it, it's just a beautiful sight. Paul, tell me so, about this podcast. It, 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 this podcast is about whatever the hell we want to talk about. It's a fireside chat with us called Camp Goosebuds where we talk about all the fun stuff that happened in the past month. It's a wonderful time. That sounds great. I I would love to do that. So I just take uh, my excess funds that I'm doing jack all with, and uh, I get to put it towards you That you were paying? Yeah, you were the, the, the funds that you were using to pay your way into heaven, you used them. Yeah, Scientology doesn't need this anymore at all. I'm totally out. Uh, I will go right over to, to our Patreon. Is there a certain location, Dom, to Paul? Uh, Dom, I did just, you catch the address while you were over there? Yeah, yeah, I got it right here. It's, pa- it's patreon.com slash goosebuds, okay? Patreon.com slash goosebuds. Okay, I think I can remember that. That makes a lot of sense, especially since I do a podcast called Goosebuds. Guys. Patreon.com slash goosebuds.
So, um, Chad, I have an idea for a show. Oh, okay. Yeah, hit me, dude. Okay, Paul already knows this. Yeah, maybe... I'm bored of this idea already, but I'll let, I'll listen to it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> you you just yesterday you were excited about it. I'm bored of it. Paul is very flighty, fancy. He is <laughs> flights of fancy. That's the word. He 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 moves on. He's, he sees a new object. His brain is so fast. That he's already digested all the story plots. <laughs> My brain is so fast. He's so got a fast, fast one. <laughs> It'll zip zoom all over you. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I I this this came about yesterday. We Paul and I were recording the credits for uh, the Patreon supporters for the last episode. And if you listen to that part of the show, you already know this idea and you already love it. Mm. Chad, it's a show called Secretly Shack. <laughs> And Hold it's a on. show that stars Shaquille O'Neal dressing up in in everyday job costumes, such as you know coffee uh, barista or um, <laughs> okay. you know uh, a tire mechanic, and uh, it, he's dressed up, he's in disguise, and uh, you don't know that it's Shaq. Everyday people are coming in and interacting with Shaq. Um, Nobody has any idea that it's wait. Shaq. We, the viewer, know it's Shaq. Of course. The viewer knows it's Shaq because the, the show is called Se- Secretly right, Shaq. Okay. So yeah, they're yeah. in. They know. They know it's Shaq. Um, but the idea is that if uh, if the person can be like, if they're like, are are you Shaq? Then it's revealed. And he's like, yeah. Well, well, actually, I thought we decided, Dom, that famously, that famously, Secret Shaq is very good at lying and lies at least two times. And then if they stick with it for the third question, then Shaq reveals himself, right? Okay, yeah, those are the rules. Okay, so and that, that's, that's a series of riddles is just say, no, I'm not Shaq. No, definitely not Shaq. Just another giant man. <laughs> just another <laughs> giant man. Uh, and so then uh, if, if you can identify Shaq, Shaq will meet you, shake your hand, and if you have a basketball on you, he'll sign it. But that's it. He won't oh sign my god! Else. All right, is that that's uh, it. there's no cash prize or anything. It's purely just no cash prize. You just get to meet Shaq. But the other half of that is that when the person like leaves with their coffee, like not asking Shaq if he's Shaq, uh, a PA comes up to them and says that was secretly Shaq, and they're like, "What? What? That was Shaquille O'Neal?" And then they hand them a business card, right? And it says, "Was that Shaq dot com?" On it. Yeah, and it's like, check this website. Reference this website. To check if you were just on secretly Shaq, can, was can, that Shaq.com? Can I can I pitch something off of that? Because I love this idea. I love this show. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank do you want to do you want to punch you it know, up a little yeah, bit? You know what? You know this is a, this is just an idea. I haven't even written a treatment. I haven't even contacted. Well, Shaq. Well, Paul's got it all figured out already. I know. Like he already has the whole document. But I, well, I, that's Paul, what I was I was blasé on it. But once I got back into it, I'm so comfortable in this idea that I love it again. Oh, thank you. And I appreciate you not letting us, Dom and I, kind of figure it out before you just lay out the whole seven season arc in front of us. Um, Oh, yeah, it's done in my head, but I'm I'm open to collaboration. uh, It's Undercover Boss meets Shaq. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I was. there's a very Undercover Boss. Undercover Boss meets Shaq meets What Would You Do? That CBS show or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're giving someone like an open car and seeing if they take the car or not. And I guess you scold them if you do. Yeah. but it's that, right? Plus, if you, you know, you just, you you refuse the call of the Shaq. You either don't recognize Shaq because you're a dumb idiot or you take Shaq at his word. Uh, and, you know, uh, <laughs> what is what you're looking for? You just walk away, even though you're like, I'm pretty sure I, that was Shaq. I you like, believe Shaq. You I, believe yes, Shaq. I feel like if you if Shaq lies to you and you take the first lie at face value and go and he says no i'm a normal sized man you were wrong and you believe that i really i think you should win a prize for that too for being so believable. yeah so this like, is exactly like, my honoring eight by ten of shack an eight by ten of shack this say, is exactly my pitch so there's i think there's there's two different outcomes yes. there's either you immediately take shaquille at his word yes and walk away. Or if you so here's here's a pitch, and I, there'll be something with that. But if you go uh, double down, you're like, I'm pretty sure you're Shaquille O'Neal or whatever. But then you, but then he goes like, No, I'm not. And then you back away. Yeah. Then you are punished in that. Yes. As you're walking away, everything you just said, Dom, where like you know a PA comes up instead of a PA, it's Charles Barkley. And okay. Charles Barkley. Oh yeah. Okay. It, this is good because I was just about to say that. Charles Barkley should probably like make fun of you a little. Yeah, bit. Charles Barkley comes up and he punches you right in the gut, and it's called chaotically <laughs> Charles. And then he just 
r- runs away. <laughs> chaos, chaos strikes again. <laughs> chaos strikes again. Cha- oh God, chaos! Charles is here. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't acknowledge your your heart's uh, the truth in your heart. He shames you for it. And then he makes you like leave, but you feel really bad about it. And your tum-tum hurts real bad too. I, I love the idea that Chuck, he gut punches you. You fall to the ground and then he, he goes, shh. And he, he just like gives you a shush and then slowly sticks the card, the was that shack.com card into somewhere on your clothing so that you can visit it when you're out of the hospital. Yeah. You can, you can watch, you can watch your clip of secretly shack on was that shack. Yeah. You, de- you definitely yes. get a DVD that you can watch all the time and regret. Like you just always think about that moment that you, you failed, right? Yes. We'll get the company that does the championship videos for sports teams. When they, when they win a championship, we'll get them to make a video <laughs> like that for you. Yes. Uh, and then I'll be your, your, your request, uh, Paul, I think there's a thing where, like, if you immediately turn away after you've asked, uh, Patrick Ewing shows up and he's Ernest Ewing and he, like, praises you for uh, yes. not bothering this nice man, even if he is Shaq. Like, you just know. It's oh, not- I see. I see Ernest Ewing as in, like, it's just more uh, alliteration. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's not really a great connection on the words other no, than no, no. Uh, it's chaotic you're, Charles. <laughs> you're, you're an earnest person. You are a yes. nice, honest, earnest person. Yeah, and, 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 he, and then you get maybe, that. I don't know, like a little trophy or something. I know you don't get the basketball because you didn't double down on it and stick through it. But I agree you should get some a sort of A small trophy of Shaquille O'Neal is given to you. Yeah, which so it's like a normal size man. And you're a friend of a friend of Neil is what it says on it. A friend of Neil. Oh, yes. Okay. I had to think about it for a second who that was. Yes, I, abbrevi- I, love I, I abbreviated his last name. <laughs> I love it. I think it. now's a good time to... Uh, Slowly close the door on the writing room that is secretly Shaq, but cl- because clearly this is an idea that's going to get greenlit. I, I love it. Uh, yeah, don't buy was that Shaq dot com, please. We're we gonna we're gonna need it, and we don't want to invest money until we have a full pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and we do I, not want to have to buy you out. Let me ask you. Yeah, let me ask so you one question before we open not, not to open the reopen the writers room, just a tiny bit before the doors close. Just want to put a foot in there real quick. Okay. Okay. And okay. just ask like. Is any part of it, because obviously it's Shaquille O'Neal. Like, mm-hmm. he's a recognizable man. He's he's the he's the he genius. Will be, he will be in a disguise. At, at a, every time he's working, it will be in a job where he's in a disguise. I guess my question is, like, how big disguise are we going? Because even Undercover Boss is pretty bad disguises. Is it, like, a guy with a top hat? Or are we getting into, like, getting the guys who do the monster effects for Guillermo del Toro... And turning him into like a totally different person, and then it's like more easy to believe that it's not Shaq. Well, I'm gonna send no, you an image. No, it's, it's like a blonde wig. He'll be wearing like a blonde wig sometimes, like long blonde hair. Um, I just I just posted something in the uh, in the chat, which I think that level of makeup, unofficial okay. Drew, a new movie that he's going to be in, Unc- will be Uncle that, that un- level of makeup, not Uncle Drew. It's called unofficial oh, it is Uncle Drew. <laughs> that already unofficial came out. Unofficial Drew. <laughs> Unofficial See, Drew. Okay, that, that yeah, already... Shaq is in Uncle Drew. Um, and yeah, that's I, I I think that's good. Uh probably even more outrageous that like Shaq would never a person of Shaq's sha, sha, uh what stature, do I want to say? Stature. 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 Yeah. It's just so absurd. Like Shaq sticks out like a sore thumb. And the fact that you don't realize that it was secretly Shaq. You deserve to get punched by Charles Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, but remember that the, there's two there's two poles here. There's the people who take Shaq at his word, and and they know it's Shaq, probably. I mean, come on. If, if you believe Shaq when he says it's not Shaq, you are a fool. But you're an earnest fool, and Ernest, having sho- Ernest I, Ewing I, shows up. Yeah, I think or, the ideal person acknowledges it's Shaq, does not know what's going on, yeah, and and then walks away to be polite. That's second place. First place is no, sir. I know you are Shaquille O'Neal. Look, I have your face tattooed on my arm because I'm a big fan. Yeah. Why are you hiding? Can I help you? Are you in? Are you in trouble? Like what you're, happened? You're, yeah. Yeah. What happened? Tell me the story. And that's when you get the basketball. Yeah. That's if you get through the second lie because he will lie to you again. Oh, a three, three, three lies at least. I think rule of Zelda bosses. It's got to be at yes. least three lies. Three lies. The second one is the coward's way out, and that's when you get punched by coward. <laughs> that's when you get punched by chaotic Ca- Charles. Coward Barclay. Yeah. Cow- so the, and, 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 and the question would be, are you Shaq? And he says, no. And then you say, <laughs> are you sure you're not Shaq? And then he has to say, stop asking me if I'm Shaq. I'm not Shaq. 
Yes. Oh, stop. Specifically, stop asking. That's such a big deal. Yeah, well, like, that's the thing. Especially someone of Shaq's size. If someone of, of Shaq's size tells you to stop asking if he's Shaq, you probably listen. Yeah, he can just pick you up and kill you. You're like, wow, this guy must get it a lot. Wait, one more one more tiny uh, thing, just to keep the show kind of spicy. Um, okay. If it, we, we do, like, kind of a tournament of champions, like people who have who have maybe either already been on the show and failed mm-hmm. or succeeded or whatever... But maybe just once in a while, either they had to deal with it or just random contestants had to deal with that there is someone uh, uh, claiming to be Shaq, maybe like a Peyton Manning. Like a Peyton Manning will run in. Oh, a Patsy Shaq. Yeah, like dribbling a basketball very badly because he's a football player and those balls are very differently shaped. And he's like, no, I am Shaquille O'Neal. Hello, I will sign something for you. While while that other stuff is going on, I'm sorry. I love the image of Peyton Manning dribbling a football. <laughs> yeah, and he's just trying to come in there, and like it's like everything in your body is screaming. That's not Shaquille O'Neal, but Peyton Manning is so so earnest. He sold yeah. those Papa John's pizzas so well. Like you're gonna have to listen to him a he little. He hugged. Bit. He hugged Papa John after he won a Super Bowl with the Broncos. Yeah, Papa John was their like uh, offensive coordinator, I think. Yeah, offensive is uh, the key word there. <laughs> oh, got him. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Goosebuds, aka <laughs> the secretly Shaq workshop room. <laughs> you know, Shaq had a. Uh, uh, we should talk about Goosebuds. You know that Shaq had like a sketch show, or maybe came out uh, where it was like uh, Tosh 2.0. What? Yeah, I don't know if it ever came out, but I definitely met a comedian out here who was like. Yeah, I'm writing for uh, the new Shaquille O'Neal sketch show. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's like Tosh.0 or Ridiculousness where Shaq just watches viral clips and talks over them. What was it called? I don't know. I, it, I don't know if it ever came out. Checking his IMDb. It, it'd be called like Shaq It Out or something. I remember I remember when people were, were working on the Shaq sketch show. I remember so, that. So that is a thing. I didn't just imagine it. Yeah, no, unless you just power of suggestion and it was all just made up. But I think I pretty clearly remember Shaq having a sketch show and people in comedy were like, oh, yeah, I'm working on the Shaq sketch show. (laughs) Guys, Shaq, excluding Kazam, Shaq has never been in a good movie. Um, like like steel, like start, steel? like start. How like, dare you, sir? I'm sorry, I yeah, didn't see steel. Take it I'm back sorry. and I'm sorry. apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't see steel. He puts his okay. he puts his ha- his Henry Irons hammer on his motorcycle as he rides it. It's dope. Uh, it, what else? It, he's a. I'll say this about Shaq. He has <laughs> stuck with it. He has stuck with it despite his lack of true blockbuster success. Yeah, despite his la- oh, I mean the movie and the. The rap career he's going for? Yeah. He has truly, he has the most stick to of any sports stars turned actor. Hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think about this. Yeah. I say, I say LeBron's coming up as a secondary maybe yeah. now with like the Uncle Drew type stuff. Has, has LeBron been in anything as of like a full on acting role? I, I guess that's why we're all so excited for Space Jam too. Yeah. We got to see. Oh, Kyrie Irving. Wait, what has he been in? He's going to be Uncle Drew. Oh, he's Kenny. Uncle Drew. I thought LeBron was Uncle Drew. That's right. He was Uncle Drew. Uncle Drew already came out, and I think they're making a sequel. Based off, like, like shoot, like, sneaker commercials, right? Like, that's what that was. What's that, Uncle well, Drew? Uncle Drew, yeah. It was, like, just them doing uh, ads, I thought. It was uh, a series of ads that they made into a movie about an old basketball player and his old friends. And my friends went and saw it, and they said, I forget who... It was, but one of the one of the basketball players, their old man accent must have been so bad that they cut all his lines. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. He just stands there. Yeah. I, well, I think he's in a wheelchair, but then he busts out. And <laughs> does, some, does some basketball. Is that the inspiring moment at the end of the movie? Shaquille O'Neal, his show is coming out and it's called Shaq Talk. Wait, is that the sketch show, though? Or is that just him like, I'm talking about politics? It's a late night show. There's a picture oh, on God. the IMDb page of him at a late night show <sighs> at set. So it's definitely a talk show. And it's him laughing and having a great time with somebody. I can't tell who it is. I'm uh, sure maybe he's the, great. Maybe the Shaq sketch show was a pilot that got turned into that, Chad. Because I definitely remember hearing people talking about, yeah, I'm working on the yeah, Shaq sketch show. <laughs> but I feel like I would have watched that show at some point if it had come out. I think I just made the better version of that show, which is Secretly Shaq. Secretly Shaq is great. I mean, uh, we should we should sell it. And I'm sorry, you, you totally set up a Welcome to Goosebuds about 10 minutes ago, and I just wanted to keep, you know... Going into Shaq talk. Going into secretly Shaq. I mean, why not? I mean, Shaq is great. We're building a show around him because he's so great. 
you know what, Dom? You were right like 10 minutes ago. Welcome to Goose Buds. <laughs> uh, our Welcome to Secretly Shack. Secretly Shack, our wonderful podcast where we read Goosebump books uh, and talk about them. Today, we read the acclaimed, wonderful classic, The Barking Ghost. The Barking Ghost. I think I may have read this one as a kid because, guys, I got to reveal something. The main character of this book is a very scared boy named Cooper. Yes. Mm. The books that the cover scared me the least were the ones I read as a kid because I was scared of goosebumps. So I'm like Cooper and I think I related a lot. Oh, so you you saw this scary dog as a child and you were like, I don't want that. But it, I do I will it, read it. It I saw the scary dog and was like, This is so obviously not scary that I can mm. read this. Yeah, because like, even on the cover, it's like, it's not a big dog. It's just a dog with red eyes. It's not that scary. Yeah, it kind of has like a big brain, too. It's kind of a weird, like, oversized head. He has a very Neanderthal brow. <laughs> the barking dog. Guys, this is this is book number 32. 32? Okay. Nice. In the Goosebumps series, okay? okay. And, um, Ch- Paul, I- I'm sorry that this is the one you had to read as a kid. I mean, because I've... I would say, I would say this is one of the most flagrantly <laughs> uh, goosebumps, uh, frustrating tropes. <laughs> yes, ever. This it is... is. It is the entire. It is the thing that we uh, hate, or maybe I hate it, and you guys are actually okay with it. Of shitty kids pulling pranks and fake outs throughout this entire GD book. This yeah, is sick. I'm sick of it. No, I'm not sick of it. <laughs> I could I could keep talking about it. I'll talk about it for the next forty minutes. Dom, this is an improv book. This book, you could tell an that improv this book. This one, a deadline was due, and they were just writing by the seat of their pants and didn't edit anything. Yeah, should we should we give a little bit of the the plot along with all of these stupid fake outs, like the yes. ones that aren't aren't real at all? Yes. Cooper and his older brother Mickey have moved from Massachusetts. To um, Maine. I think it's unfair to to lead that the, the synopsis of this book off with the mention of his brother Mickey because unlike every single other book up until now, usually at the beginning of the book it's like me and my mom and my dad and my brother moved to this new place. He does not say that. He says we moved to this new place. He gets two chapters deep and then something strangles him in chapter three and he's like, oh. It was my brother Mickey, who I hadn't, who I decided not to mention up until now because I needed to save him to be a cliffhanger scare. <laughs> uh, correct, Whoa. you are correct, and uh, that goes on. Yeah, that goes on for a while. Yeah. I have something to say about that. Sure. Also, I think I think Mickey is before you say this, Dom. I think Mickey is also maybe one of those kind of like we keep him hidden in the closet, like the attic type brothers. Yeah. Oh, yes. Without a doubt. Well, he seems to pull pranks right in front of the family, but both in front of mom and dad, and the, mom and dad do nothing. At well, one yes. point, mo- mom tells him to not today, but Mickey uh, essentially just does whatever he wants uh, to no punishment. Mickey <laughs> acts with impunity. He he pranks with impunity, and I think it's funny that we've read so many books where the older sibling is the star of the book, and their younger sibling creates shit for them. And they get in trouble because the younger sibling's the favorite. But yet, when we swap the roles and we get to a younger sibling star with an older sibling as an as a secondary character, suddenly the roles reverse, and the older sibling is allowed to do whatever the fuck they want hmm. with impunity. It's really just a you no-win get... scenario where it's always you are the the bad child, I guess. Yes, the star will always be the bad child. The... So let's let's talk about. Let's talk about the the, the pranks here. Um, <laughs> up until chapter 12, I, I mean, the pranks are still going on. F- fake out pranks featuring Mickey as the reveal of the fake out prank is happening up until chapter 12. I wrote that down, but I think it's further that it goes that. on to chapter 14. That's it, goes, right. it goes That's on. Right. There's another one in chapter 14. It- 14 into 15 because I made a I made a note there and I think that's right about where the the I'm going I was going to put quotes around supernatural there is supernatural stuff that happens in here but we'll get to that. But that's at this point it's just that, all they're it, hearing is like go, dogs barking maybe 
and yeah. maybe seeing dogs. Okay, let's start from the let's start from the top again. There, I'll, I'll give a brief synopsis here. They move into a new house. Let's talk about Cooper. Cooper loves the Boston Red Sox. He's no <laughs> Indiana Jones. He loves. Uh, he, he loves. Collects, he, no. he collects domes or snow globes, as they're called. No one he calls says, them domes. He says. And I quote, I have 77 of them from all over the world, even Australia and Hong Kong. I guess you could call me a snow dome collector. Yes, Cooper, we will call you that. You have 77 of something. You were officially a collector of it. Also, you've traveled the world and you're what, 12? How old is this kid? Uh, He's 12. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, you know, you should maybe not be as afraid. One, you've flown in an airplane many times. That's a scary thing for a kid. But also, uh, you know, show a little maturity. Show us that you've traveled the world <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, they say they say traveling makes you grow as a person. But Cooper is still afraid of bunny rabbits and uh, garden hoses. Yes, I, the, the beginning of the book begins with him be getting scared by a bunny rabbit and then throwing a softball at a garden at hose. A garden hose, uh, and he he hates himself for when he realizes what what has scared him and I, what he has attacked. I kind of like Cooper because he hates himself for his anxiety. <laughs> I kind of I do, that but about then him. but then but then he makes you freaking sit with it for uh, throughout fourteen to fifteen chapters of constantly being scared by nothing. And, uh, you know, I just have no sympathy for the guy. Also, I sit with that anxiety all the time by myself. I don't need that, like, in my, my book characters. No, I don't, I don't need that in my book. I don't write, yeah, I don't write a goddamn book about it and tell you about my troubles. <laughs> keep it to myself. But he moves <laughs> He moves to the woods uh, with his family. His, to Maine. Some, uh-huh. some, somebody, somebody's got a new job. Yeah. And school's about to start. And he's, you know, he's getting scared by things left and right. But then he meets... A neighbor named Fergie. Not the Black Eyed Peas Fergie, but this is the creation of that name. I think R.L. invented that. Well, he mentions a duchess named Fergie, which I don't know. Maybe there's a historical Fergie. I don't know. No, that's all fiction. That's not real. That's That's got to be fake. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, her na- the neighbor comes over. The neighbor, well, bef- real quick. I'm sorry. I, I keep interjecting, but I no, have please. to just, I had to make a note of it. Cooper literally gets scared by nothing. He goes to at the end of a chapter, and he's like, I couldn't believe what I saw. And then chapter four starts with, it was nothing. Mm. Oh, I thought I, I almost brought that up. The, he hears dogs howling, and then he's scared when he doesn't see anything. Well, Cooper, I don't think you can see in the dark, homie. I don't think you can see <laughs> that far. So it's like, it's not that out of the question to not see anything yes. <laughs> out in the dark. Yes. He meets Fergie. Sorry, I had. Oh, to... but I, 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 and I like that. But let's let's come back to that real quick. He 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 first hears the howling, uh, or maybe it's barking. I can't remember. It's barking. But he, it's barking that he, cre- that becomes multiple barks after a while. Two barks. Yeah. Two so barking. he hears barking, and then he goes, "Ah, oh, maybe that's Mickey. He's a pretty good barker. He practices barking all the time. He practices <laughs> barking like a dog." Wait, can I just add real quick when I when I when I first thought about that, and this is just my my brain being dumb. I was like. I wonder if he's just hearing his like brother jerk it in his room, and he thinks that's what his brother's doing. <laughs> just like woof, 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 his, woof, woof. his brother, his brother is jerking off, and he thinks that's dog barking. Practice. Chad, <laughs> that is the most beautifully innocent thing I've ever heard, and I love it. Hey, that's what, innocent. That's what that, yeah. Well, well, the boy's innocent. Not I'm not innocent. No, no, of oh, course okay. not. I love that. You, well, I love it. I love it. Uh, maybe that should be the slogan for the show. It always comes back to people masturbating. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one of our iTunes reviews mentions that. Uh, it, I, I, I would be disappointed if they didn't. Um, they, <laughs> I would say if you practice barking, if you have an older brother that's practicing barking, future sexual assaulter. I'm just going to say Wow, that that's after. a lot of judgment. Okay, yeah, sure. If you practice barking, future sexual assaulter. <laughs> That's going to be the guy in the frat that barks at people when they haze them in. So, oh, yes, that's what that's 100%. about. I just realized that's what that's about. They're, it's like stealth furryism. Yeah, okay, I got it. Oh, yeah, maybe it's, it's someone that should be a furry so that they can let that part of their body, their spirit out, but they hold it in. But they feel suppressed the and they join you know, Alpha that, Gamma Lao, and they're like, I just, I just really want to bark at people, but this is the only way I can do it. So everyone just calls me Tebow, and then I bark at people. Haunted 
by the barking ghost inside of them, Chad. <laughs> mm. What's what's your what's what's the barking ghost inside of your soul? Think about it. Oh, it's a Maybe. it's definitely a, an original Sonic the Hedgehog character <laughs> that that can fly. Yeah, that can also fly. Bark, Barkley, like you're, Knuckles. You're... Knuckles can fly. He Knuckles should not can, fly. There's uh, no Knuckles reason for him glide, to glide, which is different. That's flying enough. Flying uh, squirrels, they glide. Flying squirrels also. There's also there's the Sonic character, the flying squirrel. So that's also that. But there there is Tails is the only one that can get vertical ascension. That could continue to go up no matter what. Yeah, until he gets tired. Until he gets his little tails tired. Until he gets tired. Everything's gliding. Chat. Everything's gliding until you're tired. Okay. Think about it. Even a plane. Even a plane. Even a plane runs out of fuel. That's a plane getting tired. That's are we doing lines from Toy Story one right now? Like (laughs) falling with style kind of shit. Yes. Okay, so everything sure. is falling. Everything is falling with style, including planes. Cool. So want to make mm-hmm. sure we're on the same page. Um, yep. So Cooper, Coop, Cooper's like a little piece of shit, and he sucks. He's a prick. He's a real prick. Is he a bad guy? I don't know if he's a bad guy. No, I think he's just a wimp. But he doesn't like dogs, so I don't like him. I and I have a prick moment that he is a total prick that made me be like, I am not on Cooper's side. I'm not rooting for Cooper anymore. I'll give it to you in a little bit. He meets Fergie. Let's carry. Let's carry on from there. I'll I'll inject my. <laughs> interject my moment in a second. well sure i just wanted to add on to this detail yeah well he's a prick he doesn't like dogs and there's not like a detail where it been like you know when i was a boy uh everyone i also i know who doesn't like dogs they at least had something where like early on in their their lives like a dog tried to bite them or they met a bad dog this cooper has nothing to pull from i like dogs uh i'm not a huge fan of dogs but i do feel around big dogs a little bit of fear because i was bit by a big dog so i yes i i have my reasons for why i'm like eh, i'm wary of dogs yeah that's believable i just wanted cooper to have some sort of like i had a bad memory or they don't well, ever like me or I don't something know that, i think i remember him saying that he wanted to have a dog in this book so why is he scared he should be trying to like adopt these dogs then yes yeah absolutely but he but he did say at one point i Let's not put that on him, Chad. Let's not mm. demean this kid and say that he. Let's not, you know, say that defame him and say he doesn't like dogs. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll come back to this adoption plot later because I, okay. I have a couple ideas about it. You know, okay. dogs play very a very big role in this next scene. Yes. Where Fergie and Cooper are out in the woods, and Fergie decides to tell Cooper that these woods are haunted, mm-hmm. and then he's like, "What? What's the, these are haunted?" And then Fergie. Gets up in his face, grabs him by the shoulders, looks into his eyes, and says, "Dogs, dogs." And then she <laughs> runs away, and and he she runs away. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. And Cooper says, "For a girl, Fergie ran pretty fast. <laughs> Actually, most girls I know are fast runners." It's like I, I, that killed me. Boy, for being the uh, the weaker of the sexes, she was pretty fast. Well, I guess that's what it's kind of calling out is like, oh, people have these assumptions about girls, but actually they run fast. But it's like in three lines, he's like, wow, she runs pretty fast. I'm an idiot, but I run fast too. And then he runs after her. I saw that as a good moment, Dom, where he grew as a person. He had a bit of a yeah, progressive moment. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> reading it, I would say reading it, it was just a little annoying. It was like, yes. Why, why am I reading this? No. Why am I reading you just like be a dumb asshole? It was, um, it was classic Stein. It was some good Stein right there. It's some good Stein. In. And uh, she, he catches up with Fergie and was like, why did you say dogs and then run away from me? And she goes, I never said that. Uh, oh, and then... She told him that she's got. He's got to leave. You yeah. got to leave. You mm-hmm. got to get out of here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These woods are yeah. haunted. Get out. So of So that here. series of events. Somebody holds you, says an animal mm-hmm. to you, mm-hmm. runs away, and then you catch up with them. And they said I, that never happened. By the way, you got to leave. I would take the advice. Yes, I would get out of there <laughs> because clearly there is someone who is unstable who is acting kind of erratically within your first meeting take the so, note cooper take the note fergie is a little unsafe i would go ahead and label her as unsafe even if never trust no, a fergie no, in no, general no. honestly even really. if there's no haunting going on you got a crazy person that lives near you so there's a problem there's a there's a negative mark on this home that you're living in i mean you you met the person and they gaslit you instantly and then told you to move <laughs> yes <laughs> Also, also, if I may, like, uh, I feel like I keep hitting this thing with a lot of the Goosebump books where the neighbor lives next door, but also 50 right. miles away. Like, it feels like all these houses, there's not like a cul-de-sac with 30 other 
neighbors because that would be too hard to track yeah. for him as characters. They occasionally, it's like everyone lives on a farm, but not a occasionally farm. Occasionally, we get that in these books, right? But I think this is one of those ones where they move to the secluded, scary old house, and the parents say that the noises are the house settling in, even though the house has been home, you know, there for a hundred years and has settled for goddamn a hundred years. So stop using that as an excuse, parents. Do they say 100 years specifically? No, but it's an old house. I'm just guessing. So Okay, I was just curious. I want to make sure yeah, I play yeah. with he, the curse. He, yes. he, Cooper takes this information, and he's walking back to the house, and he goes, wow, the house is, house is haunted. I guess once I tell this to mom and dad, we'll move. He's com- he's convinced, Dom. <laughs> he's 100% positive that they're moving. He's like, it's done. I don't have to worry about this anymore. We're moving. No collusion. No. If you want to <laughs> believe it, you can believe it. And you can just be like, that's what the way the world is. There was no collusion. I won't even bring the lady with me though i'll just i'll just tell them i've heard this thing and we'll we'll resell the home well dad will get another new job or whatever he does and we'll be fine we'll we'll move somewhere new i'll get a new snow globe by the way the mom got a new job. oh see how progressive of yes, her the mom yes. has makes the money uh, he'll get a snow globe from maine so he gets to add to 78 to his uh to his snow globe collection it's all gonna work out it's not gonna be so bad but sadly they decide not to move they say Cooper, you're acting ridiculous. Let's eat some dinner. Boom, another prank from Mickey. He uh, yeah, he, sal- <laughs> he salts his French toast. He salts up his French toast real bad. Yeah, and uh, the Kinda father just nice, walks honestly. out of the room. He doesn't even scold his child. He just goes, I'm out of here. <laughs> the, father, the father goes to the other room to seethe and to bury down his anger further into his body so it can become disease. I married the wrong woman, he just thinks to himself as he <laughs> but sits then on the he, chair. But then they bring up the haunting again, and he goes, hmm, I guess that's why. maybe that's why we got the house so cheap. He loves it. The dad sees so, the value in the haunting. Which is, I mean, I, he also just got over his son acting like shit in front of him. Yeah, it's um, very quickly. I think, I think, uh, I think the bigger brother has some sort of thing where he has he has power over the family. It's one of those things where, like, before, if he's the older brother, like maybe before Cooper was born, he saw like a, a, a murder or the father like uh, having an affair. There's something else you're going saying, on in some of these you're books where Mickey like, has blackmail over the parents. Is what you're <laughs> Mickey's got yeah, Mickey's got dirt on her, on on the, at least one of the family members, which is explaining why yes. it's just a madhouse. The inmates are running the prison. Is what you're saying? <laughs> uh, have we gotten to the part where at this point in the story where Fergie now tells him, or maybe about to, Don, where like Fergie then uh, meets up again and she's like, oh, all that stuff I told you wasn't even real. That was just a prank that I was told to tell you. But also, I am and, scared of and ghosts. Dogs. And dogs. And this is the moment where where Cooper is a giant prick and deserves no more remorse from us. <laughs> he learns this from Fergie. And I'll say that this was an interesting reveal because I'm, I don't know about you guys, but when Fergie screamed dogs in his face and then told him that the place was haunted and he had to leave, in the normal setup, that would be where she's a ghost and nobody else can see her, right? Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Typically in your normal ghost story setup, that's where the mo like, that would happen, and then, but so this is the reveal when Fergie says that Mickey actually t- tricked her into playing a prank on Cooper by saying that Cooper loves to be pranked, so play this prank on him, and she, and she reveals that the, the, everything was a prank orchestrated by Mickey yet again, uh, that she's deathly afraid of ghosts and dogs, and then guess what? fucking cooper does cooper immediately goes, immediately goes oh fuck there's a fucking dog jesus christ run and scares the shit out of fergie <laughs> scares the fucking shit out of fergie fergie is terrified and then fergie goes why would you do that and he goes haha pranked you just had to get you back and she's like i'm cooper i just told you i'm definitely a, a, i'm so scared of dogs and cooper goes i know but i it was so easy i had to do it cooper that's fucked up yeah but we're even now fuck you cooper fuck you Cooper's a piece. See, that's funny. I didn't, I didn't bump on that. Only in that I just wanted someone to not be him to be pranked. I'm again, sorry, Chad. Yeah, was that your buzzword for when we talk about uh, specific character moments in the book? Because it's goosebumps. Be like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna bump on this one right here. Do Do you remember this bump here no, in the book? It's definitely a bad writers' room lingo thing. But yeah, now it's definitely a goosebump <laughs> yes, lingo. Yes, big for moments sure. that happen in goosebumps are called bumps from now on. <laughs> when I get a little horror chubby, that's the that's the we bump. Got a bump. You get a little here. bump. Uh, but yeah, so the you know Cooper sucks. He's evil. He's an evil boy. But then dogs do start showing up. Yes. Yeah, we haven't seen an actual dog up until this point, I don't think. And this is what, like, chapter, like, seven, it feels it's, like. No, so it's, I don't even know when it it's was. It's 14. And, yeah. and 
At this yes. point, it's fourteen. And yeah. At, okay. After he is does this asshole thing to to Fergie, uh, Fergie has a plan to abduct Mickey. Uh, and Chad, you didn't watch the most recent episodes of of Goosebuds the sh- or Goosebumps the show with us. I did not. I was I was killed the piano by a piano. I think. Uh, oh well, if you weren't killed yeah. by a piano, I think we need to actually just take a second to reveal. Uh, Chad, we feel so re- relieved that your hands have healed. <laughs> You you saw a piano, you. you just busted out some nasty ragtime, and uh, you broke your hands because you were playing so fast. Oh, okay. Uh, I I am well. Thank you for your thoughts. I appreciate the flowers and the stuffed mm-hmm. animals you, you sent me. Did you get the food that um, we sent for Archie the, and and for Samson? Uh, Archie Good. did eat all the food, including Samson's food. Sorry, sorry, but I appreciate that. Uh, again, without having any hands, it was real real tough just to take care of myself. Um, and thank you, Dom, for coming over and cleaning me. I really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it was weird. You said you you said you were just wearing a, a, some swimming trunks, and you were like, "Just hose hose me down here in my bed." <laughs> hose me down. Well, I wanted to save some modesty in our friendship, you know. Like, it, oh, you didn't wear the sarong that I sent you, Chad. I did not. Uh, you know, I've been kind of saving it. Um, oh, maybe okay. for the next time. That uh, you made me power wash your beard. Yeah, it wasn't it satisfying though. Like Reddit loves that shit. It sounds it sounds so painful. So it, it was really hard for me to do. But I'm happy that you feel clean. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate you guys' thoughts and, and all the people listening. Your thoughts and, and prayers meant a lot. Uh, it, it changed everything. And, and I really and just appreciate a reminder. It. You're welcome. As Paul said, Chad did not shit himself when he put his hand. <laughs> no poop no. came out of his butthole at all. Do not no. do not perpetuate that rumor, please. The tightest of anuses. Thank you, Paul, for appreciating you uh, sharing that. Yeah, and not letting them spread that horrible rumor of you pooping your pants because you did not. <laughs> so back to this dog. Um, so oh, so so they try. So her plan is to abduct his brother, make it literally abduct him, t- tie him up, and abduct him. She says that. She says those words. Yeah, good, uh, great idea. I love this where the story's going at this point. Yeah, it's it's an evil plan, but you know what? We've we've learned that both of these people. That Cooper is an evil boy who will prey upon your fears, and that Fergie uh, is psychotic. So I mean, if sense. somebody lies to you, runs away, tells you to move, and then says we should tie up your brother, the next thing that happens is your brother dies. Yes, your brother will die. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I think so. so I'm, I'm trying. I want to be on board with this, but I'm just trying to think of any positive thing where you're like, no, but this is my new friend. No. This is my new friend Fergie, and she's empowering me to strike back at the evil. But no, you're well, right. That's- that's how well, I think that's how the mistake will be made is that he's like, ah, I need to have this friend, though. It's the only friend I've got. And then, mm. you, and then you let them take advantage of you. And then next thing you know, what happens in the in the book, Mickey's pranking you once again. And Mickey pins Cooper down and then Cooper bites him. He bites him. And then Mickey gets up and calls him a mutant, which is a great 90s insult, which yes. nobody, nobody uses that anymore. They really should. X, they really the, should. The, the, you know, the, the activism that X, X-Men tried to do, it, would, it had no effect. <laughs> People were still using the term. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty term, those muties. Uh, yeah, I mean, by the way, just for everyone listening, uh, the fact that we haven't mentioned anything else really is that nothing else has really happened in the book like at this point in time it's really just been kids running around well, yelling like, at let's each cut other to the chase then ser- i mean essentially that's what happens they keep seeing dogs they tell their parents the parents are like there's no dogs maybe we got to take you to a psychiatrist um <laughs> and so finally the dogs corner both fergie and cooper they're very scared there's a sa- sour dog breath confirmed twice um yep. multiple, multiple sours. sours and finally they decide that the dogs are trying to show them something so they follow the dogs to the shack they go in the shack and the dogs start talking to them or uh, they transform into mm-hmm. people don't they like ghost people oh so you're talking about when they actually go in- into the changing room which is an awesome that terrible the changing name. room um, yes they the reveal in capital letters these 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 animals reveal or do they do uh, correct me if i'm wrong dogs are talking to them or ghost children are talking to I them i think it's so dark we don't know and this is my by the way this is my biggest problem with the entire book besides it being boring as shit is that these ghosts are both they're, they're like a vision the robot from marvel where they're able to both uh phase through things and then turn solid at will so they are both ghosts and just dogs. They're incredibly powerful. They're incredibly powerful because they can like go through walls if they're being chased or they're pretty sure they see them running through stuff. So these dogs can like push them into this like shrieking shack 
as physical. I don't think we ever see them as anything but the dogs because it's so dark you just hear voices. Like I don't think you right. ever see a person. I think when you enter, we don't establish the rules of the changing room, but I think what happens is everything is discarded and you were brought down to your most basic spiritual form yeah they describe just... like warmth coming over you which is definitely them pissing on you which is definitely yes. them pissing on you oh abs- that's how they, that's how they melt your human body off you yes. changing fluid <laughs> but you melt down and then you just kind of this is also a bigger problem because they're like i don't want to jump too far ahead but when after you're done you just like they just woke up outside as dogs yes and i'm like did did the did the dog ghost people like drag them out there does the changing room kind of dump you out in the back through like a sliding door? What's uh, it the is deal? the least considered most important part of the book. Yeah. Yes. And then a witch, yes. I believe a witch, a witch cursed them. Did they even say a they witch? said somebody cast a spell on them years ago. Yeah. And now they have to roam the woods as dogs. But now the, you know, because of the changing room, they're going to change places with, um, uh cooper and fergie yes and that also that no no mention of the curse where like they cursed us in here and we were replaced with other people there was never like a swap mechanic originally it was just a witch turned us into dogs maybe around this room now this room has for some reason magical properties even though we've never done it that can turn us into other people if we have two other folks here. We've been trying to get two folks here for hundreds, like a hundred years. Yes. We've been unable to lure two people to this building, which is crazy to think about. Which is crazy because they can travel through walls and drag children. Yes. Yeah, they, they can drag children very strong. Like, it's kind of fascinating. It you know? really is. Like, yeah. It is. Uh, I thought of something at this point. Yes. If you ever encountered a ghost that threatened to swap your body and give you the power to do the same curse to other people, that ghost is giving you the ability to, to travel through time. Think about it. Yeah, I mean, and that's, right. that, that was my oh, yeah. big question. These, because I don't think this, that, that that necessarily happens. They get turned into dogs that are telepathically yes. linked, but they yes. can't, they aren't ghosts. They're just dogs. No. No, but they They're also can dogs. phase through things. And if and if the dogs have been around for a hundred years, we know that they live forever. That there's no death. Yes, they are immortal. But the, but that's because the kids were ghost dogs, though. Are these kids ghost dogs? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they I think they're ghost, ghost dogs. dogs. They yeah, ghost they're like, dogs. I think they even say you'll be like this forever. They say the phrase forever. Yeah, they have immortal dog powers. So what you ultimately could do is <laughs> go out into the world. Yeah. Go out into the world yeah. as a ghost dog. Check out what's going on. See how things are going. See where tech's at. See if video games are really cool at the time. And bide your time. Yeah. And then find two kids when you get to a period of time that you like. Drag those two kids into the changing room. Piss on their bodies. Remove their human bodies. And then take those human bodies. And then live in that time. Free time travel. That's all I'm saying. And then you can go back, I think. I think you can just do the change room as many times as you want. Yeah, just go back when you're getting tired of that time and you want video games to move ahead another hundred years and then do that and then come back out and just keep rinse and repeat. Piss, I had this exact same thought, Paul. I mean, less of the time travel thing, but more just like they're talking about how terrible it is to be these dogs. And it seems like everything is better for them. They are now gods. Exactly. Exactly. Because they can phase through anything. This doesn't seem like they'll age. Who knows if they can even fucking die? Who knows? Only only problem. The only problem. So when they're turned into the dogs, uh, the great plan that Cooper has to solve this is to tell his parents that they're dogs. Again, he's wa- he's running back to the house, and it's the the plan is as good as accomplished on the way back to the to the house. He's sure it's gonna work, right? It's done. It's over. Well, uh, yeah, I mean the plan is good as accomplished in terms of they just are gonna do it, but it's not gonna work. Exactly. He's but he's one hundred percent convinced. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna tell my parents that I'm a dog. They're gonna they're gonna be like, oh, we believe you now, Cooper. Let's go uh, turn you back to a human, uh, sell the house, and move somewhere else. Uh, he tries to write them a note with a dog hand, and I quote, <laughs> I impossible, so dogs can't hold pens. I think he just realized that in that moment. I also, like, I thought about, like, there must be computers at this point. Like, there must have been type on a little keyboard, I don't know, take your paws and, and yes. paint on the sidewalk with mud. Hello, it's me, Cooper. Like, so many things you could do, and their ideas are the worst. It's terrible. So the, the chapters oscillate between them trying stupid things, right? And that's about it, really? Yeah, I mean, also, like, the, talking about in terms of just writing stream of consciousness, like, there's a deadline. Not that this is that interesting. It's, like, finally the book's premise 
in the last third. It's yes. been so long, and all it happens is this intentional, like, I don't know about you guys, I goddamn loved thinking about the perspective of this family, besides the, uh, you know, the two children that are being other Cooper and other Fergie, that we yeah. never get to hear anything from them and their perspective of. Uh, like, there's never a scene where, you know, Cooper corners Cooper in his skin, like a skinwalker, and, like, the ghost, like, uh-huh. mocks him or something, you know what I mean? Like, pets him, and he's yeah. like, that's right, you fucking bitch, you're gonna be in here forever. Like, he never does that. <laughs> It'd be so terrifying. There is one moment where Cooper goes, ew, liver and onions, and the the mother goes, isn't that your favorite? And he's like, oh, wait, yeah, okay, I'm totally Cooper. Well, no, see, I want I wanted that to be the opposite. I wanted to be, like, because they were been dogs for a hundred goddamn years, they love liver. I wanted them to be like, well... What I love about that moment, I know what you're saying, Chad. You wanted them to like to, to like you wanted you wanted them to relish the fact that they had become humans, right? Well, I want them to still have traits of dogs because when they first show back up, when Cooper and Mar- Fergie show up after uh, you know, seeing what's happened, the the ghost dogs that are now in their human bodies are playing frisbee with the uh-huh. parents. And I <laughs> yes. wanted to be like do they still think like fucking dogs? Is that the way around them? They're still, you know, they're they're in humans. But maybe they'll they'll still go after a good old meat bone if you if you present it like kind of thing like they can't resist. No, they not should at have all. tricked them into acting dog like, and that's how the parents saw that. They yeah, were, they should have been like that. You're fucking weird, you weird kids. Instead, fucking Cooper, the goddamn genius that he is, <laughs> sees that his 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 fake Cooper, skin changer Cooper, hates liver and onions. But he's like, oh, my mom knows I love liver and onions. This is how I'll show her that I'm me. And he runs in as a dog <laughs> and eats it all. <laughs> yeah. That, Cooper, that's just how a dog acts. <laughs> also, this is their, this is the third time that I, and that's my only part of this book I really liked, was that as far as the parents are aware, even though they've been denying that there's dogs in the woods, now suddenly two dogs are just <laughs> continually coming into their home right. and attacking them and then leaving and coming back again. They'll be like... A five minute period where they'll eat all the liver and then the dad will be like, call the call the police, call the call the cops. We I love it. Yeah, the, da- the dad is smacking them with a newspaper. And this, this happens multiple times. The dad is smacking them and screaming, call them, call the police. Call them. The dogs run away and then like video game NPCs, the parents forget about it and go back to their work. Yes. And then immediately Cooper and Fergie can come back in as ghost dogs and start dragging the kids away. Like they bite down on other Fergie's wrist. And are dragging them out the door, and you just hear the mom going, <laughs> "Oh, I can't catch up. Oh, they're going too no. fast." Chad, Chad, I wrote this down at the end of this book. the The climax of this book: yes. two dogs burst into the <laughs> new home of of Cooper and Mickey, scream and bark, begin to drag the children out of the house, drag them out of the house, and the dad says. You know what? These dogs want to show us something. Let's follow them. <laughs> yeah, they immediately go on follow. board. <laughs> that as as they're being dragged into what's clearly like a dog murder den, they're like <laughs> yes. they got they got something to show us. Let's see what's going on as the as they're just dragged. Just a, it's just a correction, crazy. a slight correction. It's not Cooper and okay. Mickey. It's Cooper and Fergie, right? Right, right, right. right, so, right, so, right but Fergie, like that's even Fergie. worse because it's like, oh my god. Not only is my kid going to die, but I'm going to be complicit in an animal murder of someone else's kid. I got to do something my so that there's not kid. blood on my hands. Yes. And they don't do anything. They just go along with it. Well, that's they, what convinces the parents to finally be like, huh, we should check this out. Is two dogs, two rabid wild dogs pulling their children out of the And maybe that's house. the that rule is- of thirds here. First, the first time the do- dad sees the dogs... He goes, call the pound. We might, we're going to have to put these dogs to sleep. And then, yes, yes. And then when the, and then yes. they get they run away and like NPCs, they ran far enough so the NPCs forget about them. Yeah, the GTA five star warning went down, <laughs> and then they're good. And then and then they burst through and eat the liver and onions. And the dad goes, <laughs> call the pound, see if they're still busy. Yeah, they're they're so busy down at the pound putting de- down putting so many dogs to sleep. They're like, <laughs> there's so an sad. influx of dogs. We can't take any more. We can't kill any more dogs today. We're running out of killing. See if they killed those here. dogs already. Jesus we gotta kill Christ. these ones. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so sad. So the rule of thirds is that here, now that they now that they're violently abducting children the dad goes you know what these dogs might be up to something let's see what they got to say 
<laughs> so they drag the kids out into the woods. The parents follow them. And they throw the kids back into the changing room. Or no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, they throw the fake versions of themselves, Cooper and Fergie, throw their their doppelgangers into the changing room they again, They push right? them in, yeah, or something. They, like, put their... They try to... Also, by the way, earlier on, I liked when they try to stand on their hind legs to show off, and they're like, oh, and they I fall don't know over. how to do that. They fall over. It's adorable, actually. It's a very But they, they push moment. the kids into the changing shack, and I guess the magic will just swap them again. They feel warm. They feel the blanket, right? The piss. The piss comes over them. And then what happens, guys? Well, I think it's I think it's they see I think they see the kids leaving. Then they see two the dogs walking out, and the, the best detail the two dogs look at each other and scream and like bark and run away. Yes. Because who's in the dogs? They're then? finally free. Yes, they're finally fr- the dogs are free of their the, trap. Well, and I don't know if the dogs are free because those dogs are clearly the souls of the two chipmunks. Oh, the chipmunks. Yes. Yes. That's that's what I'm like. Where did the chipmunk well, souls? Our heroes are now in the body of two chipmunks because they must have been in the house at the same time. Just some fucking chipmunks wandered in. Fucking Chip and Dale just wandered in. <laughs> Chip and, and Dale, just, but, but but just into the house at the same and time. And maybe that's why RL didn't explain the mechanics of the magic changing room because it uh-huh. doesn't make sense at the end here if there's chipmunks already in there. And two humans go in, therefore the humans and chipmunks would change. But instead, oh, you're saying yes. before the dogs enter the threshold, the transformation should already be yes. gone. Yes. So, yes. so that doesn't really make sense. The humans are untouched, and animals change place. I don't. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't buy the science either. And, <laughs> and then, and then our, our our protagonists are like. I'm hungry. Let's find some nuts. And that's just how it ends. That's just the comical thing. And I, again, there may be gods. They are maybe gods. They've picked a, yes. a shittier form because now they're chipmunks and they have less, you know, mass and, and strength in the physical realm. Yeah. Uh, they definitely messed up. I still think they would be able to, like, you know, either trap animals. They could get, like, a couple of mountain lions to come into the... Into the oh into yeah, like a cool animal to be cool animal, yeah, and just start taking over their forms because I think you're hitting the right thing, Paul. Is that they are either time traveling or demigods? Legends would be told of them over the centuries of these these wood nymphs that can take your body. They they are now the monster. At the bare minimum, they can pick the time they want to come out and play the coolest video games. That's that's oh, all I'm fuck, saying. You're right. They get to play PlayStation Nine. Here's the problem with that, guys. Is that Fortnite is easily the one of the the pinnacle the of pinnacle video, of video <laughs> games at this point mm-hmm. if it mm-hmm. I, I don't understand i i bought 40 dollars to get into the beta of fortnite because my my the people i play games with wanted to play it i could yeah. not get into it i thought it was so boring and it's just yeah why do you got to build stuff all the time it's so counterintuitive to the game i just don't i don't understand right. i just don't i don't get it and if that's the way games are going i think you can run the risk of going too far and you'll you just you'll come out and you won't like any game. <laughs> so you're saying you have to come out at the apex of games. You have to you have to time your jump out of your animal form at the perfect yeah. And time. then when Smash Brothers comes out, you're gonna buy Sega Classics Collection like I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> we bought Katamari instead. <laughs> I saw Katamari came out, but that's another game that's old. I should have bought that one as well. I'll probably get it eventually. Um, but yeah, I have I have the Sega Classic Collection. So I guess it won't be so bad for them because they'll still be able to play old games, but it'll be weird. You might be hitting a, a thing, to, uh, Dom, whether you mean to or not, is that in the future, video games are going to get so big and either great or terrible, the kids aren't even going to go outside. They're going to be like in their VR hoods all the time. They're how are you going to How are you going to get them out to, to get exactly. into the fucking changing room? Exactly. How can you lure them out? You're going to be a little chipmunk tapping on the window and they're not even going to process it. You have a wow. limited amount of centuries before you got to kind of pull the cord and, and, and jump back into a human body. Now that's scary. Whoa, okay, this is huge. One, one, I think you can easily lead humans into a shack as a chipmunk if you're cute enough i think you can do that absolutely two okay global warming poses a huge threat to your timeline you got to do that shit quick we don't know when you won't be able to survive as a chipmunk okay that's you're right the shack shack could burn from a a forest fire (laughs) did you say Mm -hmm. shack secretly shack the secretly shack the secretly shack could burn from a forest fire three i think about this uh, in that one episode of uh, 
Star Trek, who watches the watchers? One of my favorite episodes, mm-hmm. Ray Wise guest stars. Uh, they take a proto Vulcan <laughs> who is on a planet who has not achieved. They haven't hit light speed yet. They haven't made first contact. They're just watching them. Um, but yes. you know, what happens in the episode is that, you know, something happens and they have to bring some of them aboard the enterprise to give them some, uh, care so that they could survive this thing that had happened uh, upon discovering the, the, the Federation's, uh, watch point that they're watching the proto Vulcans. Anyway, long story short, in order to convince the proto Vulcan culture that is down there, that they are not gods, that they are just advanced humanoids like them uh of themselves like they they will eventually achieve this one day they bring a proto vulcan onto the enterprise to show them the planet from their view i think if that ooh, that's that's the prime directive doesn't that break the prime directive it, it, it is they make an exception they make an exception and they they it, i don't want to spoil the episode it's a great episode but uh okay uh, uh music by uh uh, what is the Twin Peaks guy, Balamente? Oh, uh, a- Angelo Baldi Amenti. Yeah, he does the music in that episode. Bare, na- bare Naked Amenti. Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies. Bare Naked Ladies do the ep- episode music. Anyway, um, I think if you just, so just take that idea. You are standing where you are, and then suddenly you're on the Enterprise and you're looking down at Earth. I think you would lose your goddamn mind, right? I don't think you would yeah. be able uh-huh, to handle yeah. it. So you run that risk of hopping into a gaming headgear and losing your goddamn mind because you're like, this is too advanced. That's I true. never saw this coming. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. So you have to like, as a squirrel, you would almost need to hang out in people's homes and kind of watch their Twitch streams just to like keep mentally up to date on the future of gaming. Just chip and dale it a little bit, you know, just chip pop and- in, <laughs> see how Mickey's doing, you know. Maybe- Live inside of somebody's Christmas tree for a little bit, eat the popcorn that they put up to decorate it, you know. <laughs> That's the cutest thing I've ever heard. It's a classic uh, Disney cartoon, uh, Pluto's Christmas Tree, I believe it's called. Very much a Fievel Goes West yes. uh, family setup. Yes. So you're going to have to follow along close enough until you're ready to lure someone into the changing den so that you can play games. So am I wrong in saying that maybe, even though these kids suck, they maybe have the best outcome of any any Goosebump book we've ever read in that they are, you know, demigods. Like, they have... They are gods. Whether they realize it or not. I think that's why they can end on such a funny, happy note, is that they're like, we are gods. We can eat nuts right now and then move on to whatever we choose. First nuts. Today nuts. Tomorrow, tomorrow the, the world. world. I, and I, I, just another practical problem here. Uh, chipmunks use a lot of energy that's why they're so quick so they they need to eat a lot that's why they store nuts away so a lot yes. i mean 100 percent of a of a of a chipmunk's life is storing nuts away and having mm-hmm. sex <laughs> yes uh, as, as but, seen so, in chip and Dale rescue rangers that's what most of the episodes are about that, if you've seen rescue rangers you know <laughs> what i'm talking about but <laughs> poor gadget. How will they find the time to eavesdrop and keep up with technology and successfully lure humans into the changing den? I think you're asking a lot with a very tight schedule of nut gathering. No, you're right. They're, they'll probably right. fail like because they also they're not going to even know about hibernation. They're just going to eat what they want until winter comes and they're probably going to die. But we also, who knows, maybe they don't need to eat. Maybe we don't know. It's hard to say. They're go- yeah, right. They right. ate liver They're and onions. Beans. They ate liver and onions. You're right, but that's just for pleasure. They only eat for pleasure. Uh, not for you know, we yeah. did. We did. We've. We, you know, we've in this 45 minute discussion about the book. We've already done more thinking on the changing shack than RL <laughs> ever did. <laughs> I I gotta say, we came into this episode talking about how bad this book was, but I think it led. To a pretty good discussion. Yeah, of course. I had a gr- I had a great time. It this always is... it's always it's always a good discussion on Goose Buzz. Guys. <laughs> guys, should we should we call the episode there? Let's call it because next up, Chad, the horror at Camp Jelly Jam. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm so pumped. I know. We're excited for I mean, you. It's probably not nearly as good as I remember, but I I I like where that one goes. Well, I mean, the last time we were at a camp, I think it w- it was one of the best episodes or one of the best books, rather. It camp was right now, right? They they point a gun at a child. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Oh man, that's that's too scary. It better be that scary. I hope it's as scary as that. Cause I'm looking forward to it. Uh, nothing's nothing's topping that. Guys, uh, thank you for joining me again. 
Um, if you guys want to uh, listening, want to uh, support the show, you can listen to us on Patreon. Uh, patreon.com slash goosebuds you get access to bonus content uh, our recurring side podcast camp goosebuds where we do banter and riff on other stuff for for hours at a time and get access to our cool discord where everyone's real chill and and shares uh surprisingly wonderful personal details about their lives that i enjoy it's wonderful it's like it's being a chipmunk lurking yeah. on the lives a Fergie and in Cooper a ghost cabin and, and Mickey in a ghost cabin and the f- parents who want to put dogs to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, do you have any, any parting words? Any thoughts? Uh, I want to say hashtag thanks for saving Chad because it was all of our patrons. Yes, we, asked, you for we asked for uh, everyone to pray if they liked. And, and, you know, this is a reminder if you're on Twitter and you see Goosebuds tweeting out a tweet that's like hey new goose buds when you like that that equals 1000 prayers and your <laughs> likes your likes brought chad's hands back so he could press record and record this episode today and i learned never to and play piano ever again so thank you guys he's off the ragtime he's not he's not playing any ragtime anytime soon. i'm not on the ragtime is a great <laughs> phrase <laughs> All right, guys, I'll, uh, yeah. I think I'll head out for now and, and uh, board my house against stray animals, and I'll see you soon. Do not follow chipmunks, ever. Avoid all chipmunks. Never go with two animals into an unknown location. No matter how cute they are, don't follow them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they've been watching you play video games, then maybe. Yeah, then they probably just got some tips. This episode of Goose Buds is brought to you by our wonderful Patreon supporters. They include 4206911. It's 11. We all know what it is. Aaron T. Strunk. Aaron, watching you sleep, Dom Cole. Mm. Ew. Afshin <laughs> Mataleb. Aiden the Ace. Alistair Perez. Alicia Grave. Alan Saylor. Amelia Crouch. Andre Villanueva. Andrew Sheriff. Whoa! Anthony <laughs> Cuabara. Axel Rock. Bean Daddy Spook Boy. Back again. Becca McWilliams. Bex Moss. Big Bo on the Beats. Bradford Coulter. Brandon Rowdenbush. Brock Ram. Brian Ferniton. Brian Wells. Buddy Morrill. Kale Clinton. Cal. Cameron Hansen. Cameron McLean. Cameron Murphy Audio. Cardboard Walk. Carewise Gamgee. Carly Sarnowski. Chosen One. Cree Bricky. Chris Birch. Chris Culver. Christina Doling. Christopher Boyce. Clay Castle. Clayton C. Cody Redfield. Connor Church. Cougar Qualcon Capoman. <laughs> Dan Henshaw. Daniel Calais. Danky Mix Danky. Dapio. David Crod. Divaldi. Vivaldi's brother, David Valdi. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Drew Applegate. Dylan Vaughn. Eric LeBaron. Et, et, Eton. Wait, I'm sure you say this. Etonomore. How would I say that? Et, et, I would, that would be my try. Etonomore. Et, Etonomore. Fred Atkins. Gabe Chavez. Generally depressing. Get slinked. B word. I'm going to abstain from saying that last. That's fair. You know what you did. You know what you said. (laughs) Goblin Library. Gregory D. Warren. Happy Mealidays, everyone. Aw, Heath Robinson. Hector Alberto Rivera Ortiz. Heidi Shanks. I hope that Hector didn't get beat up in that fight that I accidentally made him be a, be a part of. Wait, Hollis what? Hornbeak. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the last. It was in the last. Oh, of course. Right so it. sorry. So sorry. So sorry. I'm it's remembering okay, the continuity. It's okay. it's okay. It's okay. I got to consult the notes more often. Hugh Bolin. I gambled on a fart and lost a memoir. <laughs> Did that come up? I think Did we that, brought... I think that came up. Yeah, because yeah. I think I had my memoir name, which I forgot. So if somebody could tell us what my memoir was, I forget what it was. <laughs> oh, uh, I think accidental. Vigilante. Accidental vigilante was mine. You're right. Accidental yeah. vigilante. I'm too lazy to come up with a clever name, so fuck it. Ooh, Yikes. dirty words. 
So F it. <laughs> Eshack Arafin. It's I Shack. I'm so it's sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I sh Shaq. Secretly I Shack Arafin. <laughs> Jack Frazy. Jake H. Jake Young. James Hudson. James Roy. Jared Mason. Jason Crooker. Jennifer Britton. Jim Greaves. Jin K. Joe, don't forget to take care of yourself. Scott. Nice message. Aw. Nice. Joey Evans. John Chimko. John Keaty. John Luke. Jonas Blatterman or Jonas Blatterman. It will never be known. <laughs> Jonas Engman or Jonas Engman. Please tell us so it will be known. Joshua Jacobwitz. Joshua Lopez. Joshua P. Robertson. Jubs. Just a pretty good dog overall. Justin Wagman. <laughs> Carl Kleinsesser. Kyla Tharp. King Bank. Lee Wood. Let that slink in. Happy holidays. <laughs> Levi, like the jeans. Logan Troiano. Luke Noodles. Maddie. Martin A. Masias. Matt Bachelor. Matt Sadler. Matthew Literal. Matthew Riger. Michael Knight. Michael McDowell. Mickey C. Michael Hartscorn. Underscore. Mm -hmm. Miguel Pardo. Michael Anteri. Mikey Jello. Malicious. Nathan Dolezal. Natu Pearl Henderson. Nick Hinkle. Nick V. Patrick Reynolds. Paul Grasso. Randy Hernandez. Reed Steubendike. Reinfected. Rich Hillborn. Rabbit Moon. Rug S. Sam Z. Cash. Scott Colopy. Senpai Gods. Shifty Swamps. Slum Lord Onion. Soleto. Ooh, that's sexy. Stealth Bates. Stefan Jive Turkey Kuabara. Steven Ghost Kisser Daniels. Swaggy Yellow Squirrel. Oh, sorry, I fucking say that every time. Swaggy Yellow Squire. God damn it. <laughs> Tana McMillan. Taylor Dirks. The Rupal Productions. The Dragon Llama. Third Sergio. Toothless Barry the, the Whistler Bostowitz. Tom. Is that my space, Tom? Uh, Tommy <laughs> Breakfast Boy Howie. There he is. Trendy Moron. Trent Davis. Turtle Manser. Tyler Penner. Up and Champ. Victor. Vincent Modica. Walter Frazier. Willa. Woody. Wood. Harrelson. Yanni Markovina. Playing Zambambino. live at the Greek. <laughs> Zambambino. Zang Keith. Zentacles. Z I did the Z so I'd be last. Have a good night, Chris Buzz. You know? <laughs> He always gets he always gets undercut. Hold on though. Oh, this is gonna this is open a sleepy can of worms. Boy, zzz, sleepy boy sixty nine. Zzz. He did say zzz, the first or they the first zzz, said good night. Sleepy boy's already asleep. So oh, I see. Oh, I think they worse. did it right. I think they did it right. I think they did it right. I you think boys they did it right. I think they did it right. That should be our That's pop song. song. That's a cool pop. That's song. a good song. All right, somebody work on it. You boys have a good night. You Bye. too. I think you did it right. I think, I think you I did, did it right. right. I think you did it right. <laughs> okay, cool. Free pop song for whoever Free wants it. Goodbye. <laughs>